Hey everyone, it's your soul, and just been digging deeply into the Jeffrey Epstein story. It just seems to keep going on and on and on into so many different directions. But in the process of that, it was drawn to my attention that this is actually one of the stories that's causing many, many, many people to identify themselves as either a conspiracy theorist, when previously they wouldn't say they were, or they're saying, I'm not a conspiracy theorist, but... Basically because this story is so overtly, obviously, highly likely to involve either murder, abduction, or some kind of non-mainstream narrative version of the events. And being as I'm somebody who's dug into these kinds of subjects for a very long time, I just thought I'd make a, a video here to highlight the nature of the phrase conspiracy theory. So I made this meme a while ago, and as you can see, the meaning of the word conspiracy, according to common dictionaries, is a secret plan by a group to do something unlawful or harmful. And let's note here that conspiracy in America, at least, actually is a crime in itself. People get prosecuted for conspiracy. So conspiracy, I mean, I hear people using the word conspiracy in the pejorative negative sense as if it's something that's automatically false. It, I mean, that just is hugely ignorant and shows a, a, just a massive a level of mind control, I would say, on the part of those people thinking that. You need to check your definitions and the meanings of the words you're using. So the other meaning here, theory, an idea used to explain a course of action. So a conspiracy theory is basically an idea used to explain a secret plan by a group to do something unlawful or harmful. So the nature of Something being secret means, obviously, you don't know what it is, so you have to theorise about it. If you see something unlawful or harmful happening, and it looks like a certain group's involved, then the best you can do is theorise about it, and that, you could say, is a conspiracy theory. It doesn't make you wrong or crazy. It means that, if anything, you're trying to protect yourself and trying to serve the planet, trying to do good things to try and help, help keep balance and, and well-being on the planet. You may be right, you may be wrong, but it doesn't make you crazy to, to have these thoughts. And I made this point in this meme, so the real meaning of conspiracy theory makes police detectives professional conspiracy theorists, doesn't it? Because ultimately that's what their job is, as I understand it, or at least as I thought it was anyway, uh, was to you know look into secret plots that these people don't want uncovered in order to determine whether laws have been broken. So as I've said here, to judge or devalue people as being conspiracy theorists as if theorising about conspiracies is a bad action or an action of an insane or paranoid individual is to deny the foundation of our justice systems and the professional abilities of our police forces who theorise on a daily basis about conspiracies. So here's to curiosity and to questioning everything since they're the only way we can know the truth and create justice. So how did we end up in this position of people thinking that conspiracy theories and the people that create them were just madness. Well, you know, <laughs> the challenge with that is that some people have said that this whole idea of negatively framing the term conspiracy theory and theorists actually began with CIA, uh, let's say, manipulators and social engineers in the 1960s. Now, I don't have any proof of that. It may or may not be true, but it would be an ironic conspiracy theory about the nature of the origin of the phrase conspiracy theory. So I've just brought you over to this post here. It's a really good post by Caitlin Johnston um, and highlighting, it's called here, Everyone's a Conspiracy Theorist, Whether They Know It or Not. And she goes through in quite a lot of detail here about um, the, the core issues surrounding really what conspiracy theory is and the, exactly the kind of subjects I'm talking about here. Well, she prompted my memory. One of the interesting things she mentions here is, because we're, we're looking into Jeffrey Epstein at the moment, and she quotes someone from M MSNBC uh, saying, our sources are still saying that it looks like suicide and this is going to set conspiracy theorists a buzz, I fear, said NBC correspondent Ken Delanian. NBC News has been hearing all day long that there are no indications of foul play and that this looks like a suicide and that he hung himself in his cell. She says here that, that this anchor was uh, stumbling over the phrase conspiracy theorist in a mad haste to try and get it out. But she highlights here that there's a, a story which was put out in The Intercept not so long ago, a few years ago, showing evidence by emails that this guy is actually an asset of the CIA. This reporter himself is a CIA asset, happy to work with the CIA and sharing information and so on. 
So that then led me on to remember Dr. Udo Ulfkutter. Now, he's somebody who seems to have been pretty much erased from the, the world's conversation, and he really shouldn't have been, but it's understandable that he was, because he was a German editor and journalist, uh, as I understand it, editor of Germany's second biggest newspaper, who publicly came out and stated that he'd been in the employment of the CIA and had basically lied to the world constantly throughout his whole career in order to make America look better. And he eventually started to think that America was trying to create a war with Russia and he really didn't want to have anything to do with that. So his conscience got the better of him and he came, came forward and basically said, look, I've been lying for all these years. And not only that, he said that everyone else in the entire mainstream industry was also in the pay of the CIA and also lying. Now, this isn't just some guy who's, you know, quote unquote, living with his mum in his basement. This is literally one of the people creating the news every day in a nation, one of the world's most powerful nations. So I'm just going to play, play you the first minute or so, just so you can hear what he's saying. Well, I, I've been a journalist for about 25 years and I was educated to lie, to betray, and uh, not to tell the truth to the public. But seeing right now, within the last months, how, how far, um, uh, how, how the German and American media tries to bring war to the people in Europe, to bring war to Russia, uh, this is a point of no return. And I, I stand, I'm going to stand up and say, um, it is not right what I have done in the past uh, to, to manipulate people, to make propaganda against Russia, and it is not right what my colleagues do on, and have done in the past because they are bribed uh, to betray the people not only in Germany, all over Europe. The reason writing this book was that I, I am very fearful of a new war in Europe and I don't like to have this situation again because uh, war is not, never coming from itself. There is always people behind it to push for war. And this is not only politicians, this is journalists too. And uh, I just have written in the book how we have betrayed in the past our, um, our readers just to push for war. And... Uh, because I don't want this anymore. I'm fed up with this propaganda. We live in a banana republic and not in a democratic country where we have press freedom, where we have human rights. Uh, when we, if, if you see the German media, especially my colleagues who day by day write against the Russians who are in transatlantic organizations and who are supported by the United States to do so, well, People like me, I, I, got, I, I became an honorary citizen of the state of Oklahoma in the United States. Just why? Just because I write pro-American. I wrote pro-American. Uh, I was supported by the Central Intelligence Agency, by the CIA. Why? Because I should be pro-American. I'm fed up with it. I don't want to do it anymore. And so... I, I've just written a book not to earn money. No, it will cause a lot of trouble for me just to, to give the people in this country, in Germany, in Europe, and all over the world, to, just to give them a glimpse of a view what goes up behind the closed doors. He does go on further in this video. It's highly worth watching to uh, expose things on a broader level. Also notice that this video is now unlisted which is interesting. So you wouldn't actually find this on Google unless you were looking for it specifically. I bookmarked it. Uh, comments here, a bit strange. He actually passed on of a heart attack not long after publishing his book. Yeah, um, highly relevant that um, he came out and said that. And, you know, there are long, long, long... There, there's, there's a lot of history behind CIA programs to manipulate the media. It's well known. Um, various different programs that have been exposed over the years. And, you know, many people have come forward saying that the CIA is basically has a presence in many uh, or if not most mainstream media outlets and even has sp specific facilities to train people in the media, uh, even to become actors and singers as well. So uh, am I just a crazy conspiracy theorist or am I basically just somebody who's paying attention to the evidence that's coming out that gets buried very quickly in the mainstream by people who are controlling it? 
really what we're t- what I'm talking about here is a revelation of information, a revealing, a learning, which is what apocalypse means. Apocalypse in the religious sense apparently has been twisted to mean the end of the world, but basically the word means etymologically, uh, as we can see here, revelation and disclosure. So we're really, apocalypse basically means the release of information. So, yes, conspiracy theorists could bring about the apocalypse. We are bringing about the apocalypse, but we're not conspiracy theorists, really. We're humans who are just looking to make good decisions and help the planet evolve and survive in the face of individuals and groups seeking to control information and control the population, ultimately, for their own benefit. So. I would suggest that the real apocalypse is not in any way the ending of a world other than the world that needs to end, the denial-based, heartless, empire-based, murderous, death machine world, and the beginning of a newer world, which is not a new world order, it's a new world freedom, new world aura, perhaps, where people are free and we understand who we are, we have enlightenment and we have the ability to live freely and work together instead of constantly being divided and conquered by those who seek to take our power. My suggestion right now is do your best to take time out from your daily processes to keep up with the latest information on Jeffrey Epstein, not from the mainstream media, but from anyone you care to find on the internet who is doing deep research into this, because there are so many leads and threads connected to this character that anybody who spends more than a few hours just looking into this or even just a couple of hours, is going to come up with major, major, major red flags as to what exactly was going on with him. And, you know, this is much more than just a sexually perverted guy who had a lot of money. He had ties to many world leaders, uh, many CEOs, celebrities, tech company people, CEOs, you know, famous people all around the world, the richest people, beliefs in eugenics, It's a movie, you know, the plot line to a movie, but there's also many ties into various secret services which are starting to come out. So stay tuned and until next time, peace.